Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to Archaeology. I'm Bill Farley, your host at Archaeology Tube, uh, and um, you know, uh, bringing you some interesting information about some archaeology. And uh, like I've done a few times before, I'm going to do a little bit of pre-bunking. I'm going to talk about uh, what I think will probably be a, a coming, um, uh, let's say, incorrect uh, uh, criticism of some of my colleagues, um, one in particular being uh, Flint Dibble, who um, went, as you probably know, a few months ago on the Joe Rogan experience and since has experienced a lot of harassment. Uh, and um, a week or two ago, um, you know, if you're watching this video when it's new, uh, a few of uh, his, uh, let's say, critics went back on the Joe Rogan experience and, um, you know, uh, maligned him and uh, said some nasty things about him. And he's been accused many, many times of uh, being a liar. Uh, and I can tell you from experience, he's not. And a lot of the things that are being said about him are just kind of misrepresentations and mischaracterizations, at least in my opinion. This is kind of a rare opportunity where I think uh, one of these folks has, has kind of pre-signaled what's going to be their next line of attack, if you will, because this is a good point to make, is that generally what they're doing here is they're 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 attacking. They're not really interested in educating. They're not really interested in understanding the truth. They are looking for excuses to attack. So uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Dan D. Dunker, a uh, friend of the pod, uh, you know, a frequent caller, a uh, good buddy of mine. Uh, Dan D. Dunker recently had a little bit of an exchange uh, on the internet uh, where they're looking at a uh, kind of random paragraph from the transcript of when Flint was on the Joe Rogan experience uh, talking about uh, Flint's expertise and trying to catch him in a lie. And I'm going to explain to you guys why this is really goofy to think of this as, as a lie. And it's actually just very much Dan's normal MO, which is he doesn't understand a thing uh, he's not intellectually curious enough to learn about that thing uh, or interested in listening to people who can tell him about that thing. Uh, and so he instead uh, con sort of construes it into a supposed uh, a lie. That, that, uh, and a, he explains that to people who are not that interested in getting the context themselves. So this is going to be that context, right? So the exchange was... Um, was uh, between Dan and uh, a rando um, talking about how uh, Flint had said, well, he studies animal bones, uh, but then he also says that he claims that he studies seeds uh, and, uh, and that he studies food culture. And, oh, isn't this a lie because he's pretending he's an expert in something that he's not, which is the study of food and food ways in archaeology uh, when he doesn't really study seeds. So, okay. Let's, let's take a little look at what this is all actually about. We're having a little bit of a discussion here about methodological specialties. Archaeology has hundreds of subdisciplines and methodological focus, just like every science. Any science in the world has this. Uh, it is impossible to know how to do everything in archaeology or any other science. Nobody does. You can be sort of a generalist, but usually most scientists are going to have kind of a specialty and a methodological um, um, thing that they do, they have a little more training in than other stuff. Flint is what's called a zooarchaeologist. That's his methodological specialty. So zooarchaeology, if you break that word down, it's got the word zoo right in front of it, Z-O-O. -O. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that means he studies animal bones. He studies the interactions between humans and animals. Most often, that's we're looking at faunal remains, which is animal bones and teeth and things like that that are left behind in archaeological sites. Zooarchaeology is an incredibly difficult skill to build. You need to learn the anatomy of potentially dozens, if not hundreds of different species, fish and mammals, domesticated animals and non-domesticated and wild animals. Uh, uh, many times uh, they're studying things that are more in the realm of chemistry and physics, uh, like isotopic studies. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's an incredibly deep and wide subdiscipline of archaeology. That doesn't mean that Flint doesn't know how to do other stuff in archaeology. Every archaeologist, just like every scientist, also is a generalist. They also have those broader skills. The other one of these subdisciplines that's being conflated here by Dan is called archaeobotany. Now, that's even easier maybe to see, right? Because you've got archaeo, archaeology, and botany, right? Botany like plants. And that's what I do. I, my methodological specialty is in archaeobotany, um, and I've written papers on it and all that jazz. And archaeobotanists study 
Very similarly, the interactions between humans and plants. Most commonly, uh, that means looking at seeds or charcoal or nutshells or other kinds of botanical material that can get preserved on archaeological sites and identifying them. I would say it's similarly difficult, complex, and deep science to zooarchaeology. There's also micro-botanical analyses like Again, just like with isotopic studies, we can look at phytoliths or starch grains, which are microscopic structures that are in plants that can help you identify different species and learn different things about that. We can look at uh, the domestication of plants, just like zooarchaeologists might look at the domestication of animals. Hugely deep um, studies. But just like Flint and all other archaeologists, I'm also a generalist. Now, the place where those two things meet, archaeobotany and zooarchaeology, is called food culture studies. And this is, I think, the final leg of Dan's lack of understanding of this situation, is he's saying, well, Flint studies bones. That means he can't understand seeds. He can't really understand food culture. He can't really understand domestication because all he does is bones. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is that every archaeologist is a, and every scientist has a subdiscipline and a methodological focus because usually we work together uh, broadly to uh, to to bring those different types of data together to learn things that are more meaningful. So in terms of food culture studies, we want to study the culture of food, the interaction relationship between humans and the foods that they eat, the animals that they raise and slaughter, the plants that they grow, uh, or the animals and plants that they collect in the environment or hunt for in the environment um, requires many lines of evidence. There are definitely studies you can do just of bones. There are definitely studies you can do just of seeds. But a lot of the times, if you want to get into the uh, the deeper, more meaningful types of analyses, we're going to be bringing those two types of data together along with other stuff, you know, stuff like uh, ceramics studies or stone tool studies, right, that might teach us about how uh, the food is cooked or prepared or served or uh, with stone tools, how, uh, how are, uh, is the food, how are animals hunted and then, uh, and then butchered, right? All these different things we can learn from all the different kinds of archaeology. So the most intensive meaningful archaeological studies tend to be collaborative and they bring in all these different specialties together. So it's not unusual at all that Flint is a zooarchaeologist who also speaks about broader food culture. That's completely normal. That's every scientist that you like. If you dive into their research and learn a little bit about their science, you'll probably find out that they too have some kind of a specialty or focus. There are no scientists who study everything. This is true uh, not just with method, but also with like region, right? So there's a kind of a kind of a I would say a stereotype about archaeology. I think it's kind of based on Indiana Jones. We were watching the fifth Indiana Jones movie recently and having a kind of discussion about what what where does Indiana Jones work, right? Does he work? in South America? Does he work in India? Does he work in, like, where is his, where is his, re is Greece, you know, this, the fifth movie was all about Greece, is, 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 what, what is his focus? Because archaeologists don't really study the whole world like that usually. Uh, they typically have a region that they work in. Doesn't mean you don't ever work on projects elsewhere in the world. Uh, I've done that, Flint's done that, um, and, and many archaeologists do do that, but you do usually have a place you work. Flint works in in Greece, uh, I work in North America, right? These are these are different parts of the world and they have their own histories. You have to learn an incredible amount about them to understand that. So my criticism of Dan here is that what Dan tends to do is search for lines of attack and he searches for lies. I mean, he's openly done this. He's shown us evidence in the past that he doesn't even like read articles. He word searches them to try and find sentences that he can kind of construe as proving that somebody has lied or misspoken or is wrong. And that's just like such a terrible, bad faith way to engage on these issues. And it's really uh, ironic, uh, hypocritical to accuse somebody like Flint or myself or, or, or the many other archaeologists who Dan has accused of being liars um, when, I mean, that's lying. That's a form of lying, right? To, to search through a, a transcript or a paper and find a sentence, pull it out of context and not bother to learn what it's supposed to mean and then pretend like it means something that it doesn't. That's that, that's lying, right? I mean, isn't that lying? Do you, 
Tell me in the comments, is that not lying somehow, right? So there's an irony there. There's a real hypocrisy there. And so my 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 request to Dan would be, you you purport to be a guy that's very uh, middle of the road. I talk to everybody, and I know that archaeologists have really pissed you off or whatever. And I actually don't care, and I don't want to get into an argument with you. Uh, what I would ask you is to um to try and do this in a little bit more good faith, because you're gonna run out of runway, I think, pretty soon. I think the cracks are starting to show in this whole, you know, whatever it is that you're that you that this persona you've created for yourself. So, uh, so before you go ahead and make this video, maybe this will dissuade you from making the video. I would hope so. Um, with this goofy, this is like a really, really pathetic line of attack. It doesn't even work as a line of attack. It just shows a fundamental misunderstanding of just how any science works. Certainly archaeology. So no, Flint is not lying about this at all. He is he very accurately describes he studies animal bones because he's a zooarchaeologist. He has collected seeds because he's an archaeologist and he's worked he's a field archaeologist. He works in the field and does and does field collection. So yes, you collect seeds. I collect bones a lot in my in my uh, uh, field research. I'm not a zooarchaeologist, so I hand them off to a zooarchaeologist who is going to do that part of the analysis. We bring that together with everything, and we say something big and important at the end. So I'm going to leave it there. Again, Dan, I don't want to get into an argument with you, but that's my request to you. Drop this. This is a, this is a really pathetic angle. And frankly, searching through the transcripts of a four-hour Joe Rogan discussion to try and find gotcha sentences it sucks. Like, it sucks so much. It sucks so bad. It sucks so bad. It makes you look like such a twerp. I'm sorry, it does. Except for people who are completely in the bag already. You look like such a twerp doing this. So I'm going to encourage you to not do that anymore. Uh, so there you go. I don't know. However many people watch this video, I don't care. Uh, hopefully, just Dan does and he takes that advice. So, uh, all right. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Uh, hopefully, if you learned a, a little something here about how subdisciplines in archaeology works or about zooarchaeology, archaeobotany, these super interesting aspects of archaeology, uh, uh, dive into that research. Fascinating stuff out there. And of course, um, you know, like and subscribe to this video, leave a comment, um, help it out in the algorithm a little bit. And I'll see you all soon. Have yourself a wonderful week.